In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant us so to celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's Passion that we may merit to receive your pardon through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Listen to me, O islands, and pay attention, you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb. From the body of my mother, he named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord, and my recompense with my God. And now the Lord says, Who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring back Jacob to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him, for I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. My lips will tell of your help. My lips will tell of your help. In you, O oh Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me, free me. Pay heed to me and save me. My lips will tell of your help. Be a rock where I can take refuge, a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. Free me from the hand of the wicked. My lips will tell of your help. It is you, O oh Lord, who are my hope. My trust, O oh Lord, since my youth. On you I have leaned from my birth. From my mother's womb you have been my help. My lips will tell 
of your hell. My lips will tell of your justice and day by day of your hell, though I can never tell it all. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth, and I proclaim your wonder still. My lips will tell of your hell. Praise to you, O oh Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O oh Christ, King of eternal glory. Hail to you, O oh King, obedient to the Father, you were led to your crucifixion, as a meek lamb is led to the slaughter. Praise to you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus, reclining with his disciples, was troubled in spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was lying close to the breast of Jesus. So Simon Peter beckoned to him and said, Tell us who it is of whom he speaks. So lying thus close to the breast of Jesus, he said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I shall give this morsel when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then after the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, what you are going to do, do quickly. Now, no one at that table knew why he had said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money box, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the feast or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel, he went out immediately, and it was night. Now when he had gone, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and in him God is glorified. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered him, Will you lay down your life for me? <coughs> truly, truly, I say to you, the cock will not crow till you have denied me three times. The Gospel of the Lord. During this week, we hear the four servant songs spoken by the prophet in Isaiah's tradition, who put new heart into the exiles in Babylon. As inspired poetry, they have many layers of meaning. They spoke most immediately to the second generation of exiles who'd begun to fear God had given up on them because of their ancestors' sins. At the Easter Vigil, we'll hear the prophet proclaim God's undying loyalty and compassion for the people who are his bride, remind them of God's past pledges of loyalty 
like that to Noah. And in the Four Servant Songs, he tells the exiles of their particular vocation. To do so, he refers back to Moses, the servant of the Lord, who shepherded a forgetful people towards the promised land, who'd stuck with them so that their children could enter, though he himself died before they did so. That may be the exile's vocation, to keep faith so that even if they died in exile, their children could go home after Babylon's defeat, which the prophet foresaw. His own vocation might be like Moses, to keep faith alive in a dispirited people whose children could then rebuild Jerusalem from where salvation would reach out to the ends of the earth. Today's servant song is read again on St. John the Baptist's day. He was filled with the Holy Spirit while in his mother's womb, called to point out the Saviour as the Lamb of God and Divine Bridegroom. John died as a martyr before seeing how the Saviour purchased his bride at the cost of his own blood and went ahead of us to take human nature into its true home in the heart of God. These servant songs speak to many Christians, to many of us today. They speak to those who point to Jesus in areas where Christianity is opposed, even where Christians suffer martyrdom. They speak to those who must keep the faith in countries forgetful of their Christian past, perhaps our own country, to those who must practice the faith in Christian areas where the gospel hasn't penetrated civic life as it should, to pastors and preachers who keep faith and hope alive when many factors conspire to make Christians dispirited, to those who respond to vocations to the priesthood or persevere in living forms of religious life so, so that these important ministries may continue in the church. What energized, what heartens, what operates in all these members of Christ's body is the overflow of the ministry of Jesus himself, the divine word who became flesh and made himself servant of all. As we'll hear at Tenebrae on Thursday, he was exposed in Moses, dishonored in the prophets. It is he who suffers in the martyrs, he is the Good Shepherd, whose self-giving for his flock inspires and empowers all forms of service in the Church. In that body, his salvation reaches out to the ends of the earth. His sacrifice is the New Covenant, God's ultimate pledge of loyalty. It obtains for us all the gifts of the Spirit, who befriends all who are confirmed so that we can sense our particular vocations and share in Jesus' own fidelity to the mission his Father gave him.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look favorably, O Lord, we pray, on these offerings of your family, and to those you make partakers of these sacred gifts, grant a share in their fullness, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you. 
the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament, with which you have fed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our Lord, may your mercy, O God, cleanse the people that are subject to you from all seduction of former ways, and make them capable of new holiness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.